Jahre alt, hat einige Jahre bei der BDO gespielt, dort zweimal ein WM-Halbfinale erreichen können. Seit 2015 ist er bei der PDC und jetzt in diesem Jahr mit einigen guten Ergebnissen auf der European Tour. Achtelfinale Hildesheim, Viertelfinale Sindelfingen. Aktuell steht er auf Weltranglistenplatz Nummer 56. Herzlich willkommen dem Double Decker Jan Decker! Der heutige Gegner von Jan Decker hat uns in diesem Jahr 2017 alle überrascht. Es ist sein erstes Jahr auf den großen Turnieren der PDC. Er hat bereits zwei Pro-Tour-Siege einfahren können. Er hat immer wieder auch Spieler aus den Top 10, Top 10 bezwingen können. Und deshalb freuen wir uns, dass er hier in Mannheim mit dabei ist. Und inzwischen hat er auch einen Spitznamen. So, Voltage, herzlich willkommen, Rob Cross! Well, last weekend in Maastricht, we saw nine seeded players knocked out at this stage of the tournament. But here at the Happy Bet German Darts Grand Prix, we've started with all three seeded players making it through to the final day of action. Rob Cross looking to continue that trend as the number 14 seed, the new sensation of PDC Darts, with a brand new nickname, Voltage. And he does have a brand new walk-on song, but they've played the old one. Mind you, I don't think Mannheim really cares. They love a bit of power ballad and hair rock over here in Germany Rob Cross has provided it even though he cannot provide the hair himself he takes on Jan Decker for a spot in the last 16 it's voltage versus Mr. Coat or double Decker take your pick for a spot in round three to face either Mick McGowan who came through that battle late last night or number three seed Mensur Sulevic, those two squaring off in the evening session. Chris Murphy joining me, Dan Dawson, in the commentary box for this one. We've got one of the most unpredictable players in world darts in Jan Decker against a man who, quite frankly, has been astonishing in his consistency in his debut year on the PDC. Yes, Dan, Mr. Court against Mr. Consistency. And Jan Decker does... Well, he is hit and miss, isn't he? He could turn up and chuck a ton plus average and condemn cross to an early exit but then go and get beat tomorrow over 77 average he could and that's what's so frustrating he's so inconsistent game to game he's inconsistent leg to leg first. Game on. and the seeds have been reasonably untroubled so far Ian White almost got himself into a little bit of a pick <laughs> earlier on against Jermaine Watermana but then Cullen, sensational in his victory against Tony Martinez. 108 average for Joe. And Benito van der Pass made the most of a, a match against the out-of-sorts Jamie Kirvin. Yeah. yeah, but a 98 average almost for Benito. Pretty solid start. But Rob Cross, I mean, you expect him to go up there and average in the high 90s, if not more than that. He is just turned into that kind of player. But Jan Decker, I mean, he, he beat Mickey Mansell, the Northern Irishman, in round one. He was five points behind on the averages at the end of the game. 87 plays, 92. He still won it 6-3 because he just has this knack, Jan Decker, of doing something special every now and again. And he'll, he'll mix it in with some dross. And that's not... There's no hyperbole there. It's just, it must be really frustrating to play it. You don't know what's coming. Yeah, for us sat in the commentary box as well, we know what he's capable of at, at both ends of the scale. Yeah, I, I, look, I always think it's interesting watching Jan, and he's a two-time Lakeside semi-finalist. The boy can play, and he's got bottle. His finishing is, is really, really good when he's on it. Well, will Rob Cross kick off? With a huge checkout, the answer to that question is no, but Jan Decker... May well need one if he wants to get an immediate break. I like that setup shot from Rob Cross, though. Leaves himself tops. Oh, I like this. Jan Decker can do this! Treble 19, treble 19, double 17. Why not? 
Simple for Rob Cross. Is he hot on double ten? In short, the first leg, Rob Cross. One nil to the man from Hastings. But only after Jan Decker missed a dart for an unconventional 148 out. That is probably one of the words you would level at Jan Decker. Unconventional. Not an accusation. Quite like it. Your conventions be damned. I've only accused him of being unconventional. You uttered the word dross earlier on, Dan. Well, he does. He does throw some rubbish, but he throws some superb stuff. And often in the same leg, in the same game. Well, that leg was a, a case in point, yeah. wasn't it? Almost provided a, a real highlight of the tournament so far. That's why I just think it's so fascinating to watch him play. Jan Decker we saw in Sindelfingen, where he, his finishing was sublime. Unreal stuff from Jan Decker. He went and averaged 108, his best average on a, a big stage on a PDC. He's one, he's one of these players, just to elaborate on the finish, the route that he chose, he's one of these players who prefers to aim at the same target twice, isn't he? Mm. Two darts in one treble to get himself a shot at the double, and he'll go any way he can to make that happen. But fascinating that you would go 19s for 17s when you could have gone 20s for double 40. Yeah, and he, or, some players would say all low on the board, but yeah. then... 42. 148, you can go two treble 18s, can't you? For double time. I mean, it's a conventional thing. He's unconventional. He's double decker. Well, let's see which way will opt to go for the 132, because he might not have to go the ball 96. route. But now he will. Well, there are options here. That's one. It's a good guide as well. 92. Well, we record 150. Is it Cross's turn to threaten? It is. Can he complete the combo? Hot Cross. In the second round. Rob Cross. Rob Cross has just Jan Decker, Jan Decker there. Two treble 19s for double 18. And a 15 data. And the world number 40 is off and running. And that is a, that's a false position. He's world number 40 off the back of nine months of PDC darts. He's won a couple of titles already. This is actually 60. the longest spell he's had without making at least the quarterfinals of something. Yeah, serious slump in form. Yeah, I Shocking. know. He's got a whole six tournaments without doing it. There's only the world number three Peter Wright who did not miss a dart at double last weekend in beating him 6-3 that denied him a spot in the quarterfinals. They have met once before, actually, these guys. They met in June. Uh, Players' Championship 13. Do you remember Do you remember that day, Murph? Working with you, Dan, they all just blend into one. Well, this one will stick out because it was Steve Beaton Day. The magical day when the bronze Dodonis claimed his first ranking title for four years. Beat Rob Cross in the semi-finals that day. Rob Cross had beaten Jan Decker in round one. Beaton then went on to beat the world number two, Gary Anderson, in the final. Oh, joyous day. Remember the street parties, ticker tape parades, open top bus, Beaton, thousands of fans. It was just your street, so I'm not sure using the word parties plural well, is correct. Easy five. Didn't invite you anyway. 104. 104 for Rob Cross to add to the 150s just taken out. Double 16 it is. Oh, look at this. Back-to-back -back 15 darters. Back-to-back -back ton plus checkouts. Rob Cross doing what Rob Cross does. Yeah, Cross is the boss in this one so far. 140. When you mentioned Rob Cross and Peter Wright, I cast my mind back even further back this year to a match in Milton Keynes when it was one of the best games ever seen on live stream darts. Cross was on the wrong end of it again then, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, well, that was back in May, just after Wright had lost the Premier League final. 60. And both players were averaging... Well, 110, 108, was that right? Yeah. 
both above 107 at least. Mm. Yeah, very, very special stuff. It took 105 average, or round there or thereabouts, from Adrian Lewis to stop Rob Cross at his match play debut. We will be seeing him at the World Grand Prix for his debut there. We'll be seeing him at the European Championship, at the Players' Championship final. Yeah, and it took the established top order of world darts at their best to beat Rob Cross. Yeah, and I think that is probably, you know, he's won a couple of titles, but that fact there is probably the key one. I mean, in the top 20 players in the world, how many has he not registered a win against? Phil Taylor, because he hasn't run into him yet. And is that it? I think that may be it, because he beat Michael Van Gerwen on the European Tour earlier this year. He he's did. just been ticking him off his list. Well, Decker has a chance to set up another combination finish here. 19s again. Another one for double 16. Taking his time. Ooh, may have just taken slightly too long. Now this would be a hammer blow. Looking at 54. Hasn't got it. So a chance for double decker to hit a double. 98. Well, he's only had. 32. Slim chances so far, Jan Decker. This is a big one. To get his first leg on the board. And he takes it. Jan Decker gets himself into this one by hitting double eight. Decker beat Mickey Mansell yesterday to get here. 90. 6 3 success. Which I put, hit a couple of 180s, but average of 87. 140. Averaging slightly higher than that now, but nowhere near enough to really trouble Rob Cross so far. No, not as yet. 37. Still searching for our first maximum in this game. Well, you say that, Dan. Right on cue. <laughs> Call off the search. There's number one. I'd be surprised if we don't see more. 91. Rob Cross having 98. lost his first leg of the game on an 11 data. Response from Voltage. <laughs> Oh, I love that look that Rob Cross gives Dave. Oh, why have I got to go for that? He did block his path to the <laughs> treble 20. Well, you were telling me earlier about... Well, actually, it was Paul Nicholson that was telling me earlier mm. about Joe Cullen's practice routine. Cullen, a stable mate of Rob Cross's and a friend. Rooming this weekend. And he only goes for trebles, so maybe Cross practices with Joe and then it's only when he gets into a, a real match that he realises he has to go for a double. He's not too bad at hitting them. Well, he's four out of five, eighty percent. So, whatever he's doing, keep doing it, Rob Cross. He is only just playing his, his second tournament in PDC darts with these new darts that he's got. He'd been practicing with them, playing local tournaments over August. He's had them for a little while now. They're basically made to resemble his old ones, except they have the added bonus in that they're all the same weight rather than being two grams difference between the heaviest and the lightest ones as Jan Decker comes to the party with a max Cross going to respond in kind 140. just collided off the southern part of the barrels and Decker just clinging on to the coat tails 140 41 left after nine from Jan Decker. Again, you know, he's fired in his best leg of the match and, and looks sublime right now. Can he sustain it? Fantastic 11 data from Jan Decker. Yeah, he's really moved up a gear, Jan Decker, now in this match. 
And from what we saw yesterday, cross the ton topping average and rising. 140. He's a guy, Rob Cross, who his darts don't stand up massively in the board. And even if he's got a dart, dart that's low in the treble bed, he doesn't care. He reckons he, he's learned how his darts behave and he can try and jam it underneath. And now we see Rob Cross, the average is gone over 104 that'll drag it down a shade but this is just what you think rob cross is going to do every time he steps on a big stage it's just a rob cross game and this is elite level stuff yeah in the match involving richard north yesterday I was talking about how well he's done for a newcomer rob cross is at the point where you actually forget that he is a newcomer yeah. because he's just become 60. so established and we're so used to seeing him do this yeah I, and uh, to be i think people would have talked a lot more about richard north if it wasn't for the fact that rob cross has had this incredible debut year which is as good oh, as any i've ever seen in the pdc richard north has been fantastic in his debut year but rob cross has just been i mean it's the stuff that dreams are made of yeah, Cross earned his card by winning the PDC Challenge Tour last year. Of course, 92. this year's tour comes to an end this weekend. So we'll see who will earn a card by right. The top two from the Challenge Tour will be full-time on the PDC Pro Tour next year. With numbers 3 to 8 getting free entry to Q School. For another Tom Plus checkout. 150, 104, and 112, and Rob Cross, it's 5-2, and it's going to take something spectacular from Jan Decker to turn this around. But if there is a man, who having only won two legs, could produce something spectacular out of the blue, it might well be Double Decker. Well, is Jan the man? That remains to be seen. Needs four straight legs to topple Rob Cross. He might well need to relent himself as well. Menso Sulevic or Mick McGowan await the victor of this contest. 140. Very impressive darts earrings there in the crowd. Very impressive darts from Rob Cross, maximum number two. Only hit two maximums despite the fact he's averaging 102 and it just shows there's more in the tank for voltage. 94. I'm just wondering actually if Rob Cross is a superstitious man and went back to his old walk-on song due to not progressing as far as the quarterfinals last weekend. Wow. January 167. Dance players have done stranger things. Very superstitious, and the writing could be on the wall for Jan Decker. And cross finishing style. 131. Well, it'd be a fourth ton plus checkout. It'd eclipse even the 150. But it's not going to go for Rob Cross. He's going to have to wait a little while longer for a dart for the match. The only requires 36. <laughs> well, it was 1-1-2 one, one, in the previous leg from Rob Cross to go over 104 and 150. Can he add a fourth ton plus checkout to book his place in the final day of action? Double 16 to do just that. Easy. Not quite. A reprieve for Jan Decker. Well, the one thing I will say for, for Jan Decker today, we've not mentioned his throw, which looked like a bit of a struggle yesterday. And he takes out 18, splitting it and taking out double eight. Because yesterday, against Mickey Mansell, he had some worrying technical issues with his throw that do not seem to be an issue today. The main issue that Jan Decker has got is he's taking on Rob Cross, who's averaging a ton plus, fired in his third 180 and looks to have his eyes firmly on the prize. Jan Decker doesn't like the lie, but he found a way. Ninety-seven. 
Follow it up, yeah. Not with a skinny five. That's not what I was getting at. It's more like it, though. Well, he's still in the match. Cross should be down to a finish. Something would have to go drastically wrong for that to happen, and it hasn't. And he's down to a two data. All Decker can do is hit and hope. Hit. Now the hoping is going to start. It's another wonderful last dart from Jan Decker, firing it in there at an improbable angle. And he's on 56 after nine. But Rob Cross, another match dart. And this one at the ball finds its mark. A 6-3 victory and Jan Decker battled hard. He averaged 97 himself. But it's still not enough to live with this man, Rob Cross. 104 average. What? 75% on the doubles, three maximums. Rob Cross looking every inch an elite level player once again. Through to the last 16 on the European Tour. And it's either Mensor Sulevich or Mick McGowan who await voltage tomorrow afternoon. We're halfway through the afternoon session here today. The King, Mervyn King against Vincent van der Boort, a clash of former Euro Tour winners. Gerwin Price and Christoph Ratajski is an intriguing one. The Cobra, Yella Klaassen and Jamie Bain will finish things off. That'll be rapid fire, but coming up, it's Chizzy and Nathan Aspinall. I predict 180s. Average of 104 almost, double percentage around 80%. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, um, I felt comfortable, but today me scoring wasn't as good as what maybe normally. Um, I found early I struggled to score and then I got it going later on. Um, but I'm impressed with my doubles because usually, I, I suppose with the new darts now, I've, I've been maybe missing a few more than what I usually do. So um, that's going to be a massive confidence boost going into the next day. And I, I actually feel like they're starting to come together. I think they're going to take a little bit of time, but once I get used to them, they'll be better than the old ones, definitely. Okay, after this year, 2017, after so much success, do you feel pressure? Do you feel higher expectations? I think, yeah. <laughs> I think um, things change. Maybe I'm looked at in a different way that I'm expected to win a game now. Um, but the way I work, I keep my head down and I work hard and that's all I've got to do. If I keep focusing on me up there and then you never know, do you? You're going to be brilliant. Great. It's good to have you here. Thank you very much. Rob Cross. Yeah.